Okay, now that we did the uh, approach plate briefing, we're in the airplane, we're heading west towards our IAF, uh, Raya. At Raya, we're going to start a turn to VOR Pogi at a heading of 198. We're at 5000 and we're immediately going to start our descent to 4000. By the checkpoint Doga, we should be at 4000 feet. The VOR needle is coming in. We do want to maintain a high rate of descent. Let's talk about the frequencies I've set up. In VOR1, I've set up the Pogi VOR 109.8, and in VOR2, I have set up the Mission Bay VOR at uh, 117.8. After I pass the checkpoint Doga, I'm going to switch the frequencies. In VOR1, I'm going to put the localizer at 110.9er. In VOR2, I'm going to put the Pogi VOR at 109er.8, and this is for triangulation. Okay, now if you remember from the approach plate briefing, we know that we are over the checkpoint Doga when we're on a 198 heading to the Pogi VOR and we intercept a radial of uh, 084 from Mission Bay VOR. So at this point, as you can see right here, we're at a 084 radial from Mission Bay, so we're over Doga and we're at about 4,100 feet and descending to 4,000. Let's start leveling off at 4,000 feet. We're going to maintain 4,000 feet until we intercept the localizer from runway 27 into San Diego. Now at this point, uh, we're going to switch our uh, nav frequencies. In the VOR2, I'm going to put POGI VOR 109.8. In VOR1, I'm going to put the localizer at 110.9 and a heading of 272 for the localizer. Okay, now that we have our frequencies set, we're going to get rid of the flight computer. Now, as you remember from the approach plate briefing, we are going to fly the localizer at a heading of 272 into San Diego, but the VOR2 is going to be tuned into the Pogi VOR. That way we can triangulate our points. Now, in this airplane, we have both. We have a DME and we also have a second VOR, so we can do both. We can either triangulate or we can use the DME to get our checkpoints along the localizer flight path so we know when to descend and how far down to descend. So as we remember from the approach plate briefing, the point Vita, our next checkpoint where we intercept the localizer, is 14.3 miles from the airport. At this point we are 14.6 miles and the localizer hasn't started to come in. So we're going to start a gentle turn to intercept the localizer even though the needle hasn't started moving. Now, this is not the case for every localizer and every approach is different. But for this one, you kind of have to start turning a little bit early. And as you can see, the localizer needle is starting to come in pretty fast right now. At the same point as we start our turn, we're going to start our descent to 3,600 feet until we reach our next checkpoint, which is Okane. So as the needle is starting to get centered, we'll turn to a heading of 272. And at 3,600 feet, we're going to level off until we reach our next checkpoint, which is Okane. Point Okane is 12.3 miles away from the airport. Or if we're going to triangulate, we can do that by looking at the VOR2. As soon as we reach the radial of 351 from the Pogi VOR, we have reached our checkpoint OK. Because we are so close to the VOR2, the Pogi VOR, if we look at the VOR2 needle, you can see how fast it's moving. So we really have to pay close attention to the VOR2 needle, because in this case, it is moving very fast. So at this point, we're 12.3 miles, 351 uh, radial from the Pogi VOR. We're at checkpoint OK. And let's start our descent down to 2,400 feet for our next checkpoint CG. Now during this whole time that I'm doing this, I'm not paying attention to what's going on outside. All I care about is these instruments. Attitude indicator, airspeed, altitude, heading, localizer needle, VSI. Attitude indicator, airspeed, altitude, heading, localizer needle, VSI. We're gonna keep the scan going because the worst thing we can do when we're doing an instrument approach is focus on only one instrument. So we'll keep that scan going. Attitude indicator, airspeed, altitude, heading, localizer needle, VSI. Attitude indicator, airspeed, altitude, heading, localizer needle, VSI. There's nothing we can see outside anyway. There's nothing to see except clouds. So we have to keep looking at our instruments to know where we are. Now, once we pick up the runway visually, we're going to switch our attention from the inside to the outside. As soon as we have the runway in sight, all our attention is going to be to the outside. Okay, so we're inside clouds now, 2,400 feet. Let's level off until our next point CG. And checkpoint CG is at 8.4 miles from the airport or if we're triangulating, it's at the radial of 314 from the Pogi VOR. OK, 
Okay, so here we are, 8.4 miles or 314 radial. Let's start our descent down to 1,800 feet to our next checkpoint, Rebo. To maintain the localizer needle centered, we're gonna fly headings. We're not gonna fly the needle, we're gonna fly headings. The next checkpoint is checkpoint Rebo. Rebo is at 6.5 miles or radial 304 from the Pogi VOR. Rebo is also the final approach fix. At the final approach fix, we're going to start our timer, we're going to bring our landing gear down, and we're going to start our descent down to our, uh, to our decision altitude, which in this case is 640 feet. Okay, let's level off at 1800 feet until we overfly our next point, Rebo. Okay, we're over the final approach fix, checkpoint Rebo, start the timer, start the descent, landing gear down. Let's scan those instruments, attitude indicator, airspeed, altitude, heading, localizer needle, VSI. This approach is actually very tough. I actually had to do this approach a couple of times to get this one down. The reason being everything is happening so fast. In every approach there's a lot of things going on. In this approach there are a lot of things going on a lot faster. And this is going to be even more obvious when you're flying this approach yourself as opposed to watching the video of this approach and me flying it. When you're actually doing it yourself, it can be very overwhelming. Okay, so now we just picked up the runway visually. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to switch from uh, instrument flying to visual flying. So, so from this point on, we can actually use the papulites to keep us on the glide slope. We're still going to glance at our airspeed and our altitude, but we're going to keep our eyes on the runway. Let me talk a little bit about a trend that I've noticed with some of the simmers, especially the new simmers. For some reason, a lot of new simmers are convinced that they can fly the approach better using the instruments. But it is a lot easier to fly the approach visually. Any actual pilot will tell you that during IMC IFR conditions, the sooner they pick up the runway visually, the better they're off. So for some of you guys that are having problems aligning with the runway, trying to do it with instruments is a lot harder than trying to do it visually. What you need to do is you need to learn how to align with that runway visually because if you can't align with it visually, you're not going to be able to align with it using the instruments. We're on the glide slope and as we get closer, we can see that the flight simulator did a good job. We can actually see the parking building, so, so we're going to fly over it and then we're going to do a rapid descent down to the runway. Now that we have overflown the parking structure, the only thing that's going to be left is to maintain that center line and to do that flare properly. So the landing was right on the mark and it was right on the center line. So I'm actually very happy with this whole approach. This Airbus 330 is really smooth to fly. And let's take a look at our flight path. And as we look at the flight path, okay, you can see where we came in. You can see our IAF, Raya, Doga. Then we started the turn at Vida and followed the localizer right in. Now, like I said, this is a very hard approach. A lot of things are happening in a, uh, in a short amount of time. So if you can do this approach manually, you can probably do any other approach in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This actually was one of the more challenging approaches uh, that I've done in uh, flight simulators, especially for uh, Airbus 330. Okay, the next approach is going to be the Madeira Airport. It's going to be a VOR, runway 05 approach. This is going to be a very interesting approach. So thank you guys for watching. Stand by, and I'll see you guys soon.